Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video, and you may accidentally hear my cat in the background, who's not very happy with the fact that I had to close the door. Do you have anything to say, Lucifer? Bro silent after the video starts. So what are we going to be doing today? I'm going to be going over the banner that should be coming up pretty soon. I saved this off from the last video, but I figured I'd talk about it now because it should be coming up because it usually comes a week after. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, feel free to uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that other good stuff. And let's go. So the banner here is going to be a very... Basically, this banner is how much do you want Bedivere <laughs> medals? Because <laughs> the banner features Napoleon, Dion, and uh, Bedivere. Uh, both Napoleon and Dion are not locked. They're in every banner. Napoleon is a 5-star, so if you want a featured 5-star, uh, this would probably be your best chance to try and get to him. But at the same time, they offer Napoleon on, like, free SSR tickets. So, not necessarily a unit. If you Basically, what I'm saying is, if you badly wanted Napoleon, the best way to get him would actually just be to wait than to actually try on banners, where your quartz would probably be better spent on, you know, units that are limited. But funny enough, Bedivere is technically limited because he is story locked. Story locked is a lot like um, being limited except for with extra hoops. You can only really get him in the story banner or banners that have him in it. So let's go over Bedivere real quick then. We'll start with him because I think this is the. If you're summoning on this banner, I think you really want medals for Bedivere. That's the reason you're summoning on this banner for me. So we'll go. Betty is a saber. Uh, he has two quicks, one arts, two buster. His first skill, which gets uh, upgraded, is the Knight Tactics B. Increases party's MP damage for three turns. Increases party's MP generation rate for three turns. 20% and 30% on the cooldown of five. His second, school, uh, his second skill is Calm and Collected, where he charges his own MP gauge by 30%. Increases his own mental debuff resistance for three turns. And the B debuff resistance is by 50%, and that's a cooldown of six. Uh, his O for Protection B is an increase of party defense for by 30% for one turn, and then an additional increase party's debuff resistance for a single turn. The debuff resistance is 50%, and the cooldown is 5. His passive skills are Magic Resistance B and Writing A. His append skill for the third skill is a increase against Berserkers. And his Noble Phantasm is C+, the switch on Artigetalon, take up a sword, a silver colored arm, it's a C+, rank Noble Phantasm, anti-unit, hits twice, is buster, and it deals damage to a single enemy, the damage being 800% and MP level 1, and if you get him all the way to MP level 5, it's 12,000, and then he also increases his own buster performance for a single turn, this activates first. Um... At charge level 1, it's 30%, and if you get it all the way to the final charge, it is 90%. And also, very important, he does have a costume, Silver Butler, where you can dress him up as a butler. And that's Betty. Betty is a... Bedivere is a very simple... He is a buster unit, while not being full gorilla, because he only has two buster cards here. But he also offers some other things, like he offers support, he offers MP generation. So he's one that can kind of support on the side, and then uh, w come in with a huge MP. And I really like Betty. I, the Bedivere is actually, <laughs> if it wasn't for the fact that I have an MP5, um... No, I don't have an MP5. Never mind. He's one of the he's one of the single target. I'm thinking of archers. He's one of the single target sabers I actually end up using the most. I really like him. I really like his playstyle. I like his ability to kind of go defensive for a single turn, which is pretty nice. Um, I think he's an overall very solid unit, and he's a fantastic three star. Uh, definitely worth having, and definitely worth um, using. And also, he's a fan favorite, which is why I think most people would want to summon on this banner who really like Betty, because it's not easy to get Bedivere medals. And if you want to get him all the way to level 120, it's also not easy to get him MP5. I use my Betty, I think he's still MP1, and he's been that way since I got him in Camelot. Um, so this would likely be your best chance of getting some more copies for him. Uh, should you summon just for him? I don't think that's a, a question... I can really answer. I think the answer is if you really love him and you badly want those medals, this is your best chance and you're never going to get a better chance than you're going to have right at this moment. So that's what Betty does. I think he's really neat. Um, 
three star unit there's no reason to summon for him if you're just going for him because everybody has a betty he comes with a copy of your xbox you just beat camelot and you get bedivere and you're perfectly well to go and with and one single mp copy you can still use him to an effective level because i've been able to do that and i've uh i've been able to use him over the years and he's always been very reliable so there you go that's bedivere Let's go on to Chevlard Lyon. Now this is another unit that I feel ends up being um, a little bit underused because I don't think a lot of people end up using a lot of like taunt unit. Uh, Dion is a, a saber. Uh, they have quick two arts, two buster. The first skill is the Eye of the Mind True C, which grants self evasion for one turn and then increases on defense for three turns. The defense up is 16% because this is an early unit, so it has weird defensive values. <laughs> Cooldown is 6. The second skill is Self Suggestion A, which removes own debuffs and then increases own debuff resistance for 3 turns. The debuff resistance is 100% on cooldown 5. The third skill is a Look of Loveliness C, 500% chance to draw attention to all enemies to self for 3 turns and then recovers own HP. Uh, the taunt is 300% and the heal is 2500. Um, 2500. And then the cooldown is 5. The passive skill is Magic Resistance C and Writing B. And the third skill is an Anti Assassin Damage Aptitude. And the Noble Phantasm is a Rank C plus Fleur de Lace, Gorgeous Splendor of Blooming Lily. Or Lily? Yeah, Lily. C plus Anti Army. Reduces all enemies' attack for three turns, reduces their defense for three turns. At MP level 1, it's 10% and 10% 10, uh, 10 attack for attack and defense. And at MP level 5, it's 30% for both. And the overcharge effect is a chance to charm all enemies for a single term. The charm chance is 30% at a charge level 1. And all the way at, if you get it to the final charge, it is 70%. And that's Neon. Uh, I think this is a, a unit that ends up being one that is fantastic for challenge quests. The ability to taunt an enemy is, I think, I think ends up being, it is both very valued by the people who understand how valuable taunt is and is undervalued by everyone who only focuses in on either attacking or looping. Because if you don't do any of the challenge quests, then yes, taunt has no, no purpose. If you don't, uh, who cares about taunt when all you're doing in the game is grinding and three turning everything, then yeah, taunt doesn't, a taunt unit doesn't really serve a purpose. But when it comes to challenge quest, I love having uh, my Theon right there just ready to tank a lot of hits and <laughs> do the unfortunate part of the side, uh, do the unfortunateness of this side of the battle, which is I just need someone to take the hits and be able to survive it, and they're pretty good at that, I would say. So yeah, another unit that is not that is um, it is not limited. So and also there are free taunt units if you're badly desperate looking for taunt units like uh, Saint Georgios. He has taunt, so it's not like you have to go out of your way to get Dion. But I definitely feel like if you have Dion, then y it's a pretty solid unit that you can use for certain uh, situations. I just feel like a lot of the time people probably don't end up using them for those situations. So a unit kind of goes like. I remember because I was like that a whole bunch when I first started the game. Like, why would I ever want to use a taunt unit? These units suck. And I was like, blah, 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 blah. But then when you actually try and do any of the challenge stuff, and you actually try and make fun teams, <laughs> then you're like, oh, okay, then I can use them to an effective degree, and then they end up actually being really fun. So there you go. That's Dion. Not limited, so again, not really 100% worth going for unless you're someone who's like, no, I need my ultimate tank. I need my Dion to be level 120. And they're featured, <laughs> so you go for it. Which I say good luck, it is not easy to level 120 a 4 star. It's not easy to level 120 any unit in general. And finally, speaking of general, we'll go to Napoleon, who was not a general, he was an emperor. He has a movie coming up. Uh, this version is the super highly idealized version though, that's why he's tall. So Napoleon is an archer. He is also, like I said, not limited at all. He has one quick, two arts, two buster. First skill is the Triumph of Charisma B, increases party's attack for 3 turns, uh, further increases own attack by 20% for 1 turn, attack is up by 20%, and the cooldown is 5. On the second skill is the first, the Fire Support Cannon B+, increases party's MP damage for 1 turn, increases party's critical star generation rate for 1 turn, that's 20% MP damage and 100% star rate at a cooldown of 5. And then his third skill is the Light of Possibilities B, which is charges his own MP gauge, ignores invincibility for 3 turns, and then gains crit stars every turn for 3 turns. The MP up is 30%, and the star regen is 10, and the cooldown is 6. 
The passive skill is Magic Resistance C and Independent Action C. His third skill is an Anti-Rider Attack Damage Aptitude. And his Noble Phantasm is the Rank A Plus Arc the Triumph the Altiel. An arc of a rainbow that announces a triumphant return. It's an anti-army rank A plus buster noble phantasm. Ignores defense for one turn, deals damage to all enemies, and then gains 20 crit stars. Damage is 400% and, the da and if you go to level 5 it is 600%. MP level 5, excuse me. Deals, dam uh, deals extra damage to divinity enemies. Uh, charge level 1 it's 150% and if you get them all the way to the final charge it is 200%. Very basic, very normal unit. He is Buster, and thankfully his cooldowns are low enough that you can actually use him. With Tamamo, the only thing that's kind of a bummer is that it's 30% and not 50%, so that makes it a little bit annoying when you're trying to calculate, like, how do I actually best use Napoleon. It's not a complete deal breaker, but it does mean that he has a little bit less to work with in terms of um, CE choices and certain team comps, or you have to make certain concessions in the team build to get it working, but it does work. Um, I don't, th the, the one thing I'll say about his buster is that I, that he is AoE, but I'm not 100% sure how often I'm fighting divinity foes at an AoE. I think it ends up being one of those things that's like, I think there might be occasional challenge quests or story notes where you'll fight a buttload of divinity dudes, and in which case, Napoleon comes in clutch because he'll be dealing a buttload of damage to them. Because he is Buster and he can be used with those Buster units, and he can, and Buster with crit stars equals a deadly combination when you go in there. But for the most part, I think he ends up being a unit that is pretty solid if you have the right units to use him. If you don't have Tamamo, then obviously you're gonna, uh, Vich, I should say. Um, or uh, Koyanskaya as others. I have to remember that some people probably only call her Koyanskaya and not Tomomovich, but whatever. Um, I think Napoleon ends up being a pretty solid unit. Probably nothing, nothing actually about him is like too outstanding to me when I look at him. Yeah, nothing really like screams out at me and says like, oh yeah, that, that's amazing. That's 100% makes, <laughs> makes, a, makes or breaks him. Hmm... Yeah, really, really nothing. If you have any specific, because I don't use, I have Napoleon, but I actually don't use mine a whole bunch. But that's because I have other AOE archers to kind of like compensate for not. <laughs> I don't need to use Napoleon when I already have so many up and going. But I would be curious to hear from someone who is a diehard Napoleon fan. But from what I've heard about him in general and people using him is that he's just kind of okay. There's nothing too extraordinary, but maybe my information is outdated and maybe it can be used. It can be improved upon, and I would gladly hear from anyone who wants to make the case for Napoleon. But for right now, I'll keep Napoleon as a dude who's like, if uh, he's a cool unit, I really liked his bit and the Lost Belt, but other than that, not really someone that you would go out of your way to try and get, I would say. Because again, if you did want him, it's easier just to wait for the free SSR ticket and get him that way. And that's this banner. I don't know if there's going to be any changes to it. And I guess if there is a change, I guess I'll make a follow-up video talking very quickly about the unit they added. Um, they could end up adding a unit to it. I don't know who to be 100% to be real with you. Because I haven't had time to actually do the story. But they could add units to it. <laughs> It's one of those things of like, yeah, they technically could, and they have been doing that a little bit on NA, but let's see if it actually happens. But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Happy summoning if you do end up summoning. If you do end up summoning, feel free to tell me how you did. Always very curious to see how people end up doing, and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, peace out. Goodbye.